بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس وی یو اسٹارٹیڈ دس جرنی ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ اینڈ کمپریہینڈ واٹ از کرپشن اٹس امپلیکیشنز اٹس ٹیک ہولڈرز اٹس گلوبل پلیئرز اٹس نیشنل پلیئرز اینڈ ہاؤ اٹ ٹینس ٹو کریٹ کے آس اینڈ ہیو واک ود ان سوسائٹی ناؤ دیر آر مینی انٹرپریٹیشنز اینڈ ڈیفینیشنز آف کرپشن بٹ وی ٹرائی ٹو لک ایٹ اٹ فرام اے نیرو سینس اینڈ فرام اے براڈر سینس فرام دا نیرو سینس کرپشن is interpreted as referring to bribery only and that basically means uh, the giving and the taking of some financial benefit and for authorization of a particular transaction in its broader sense when we are talking about corruption then it includes bribery extortion fraud cartels abuse of power embezzlement money laundering dereliction of duty favoritism uh, discrimination uh, nepotism destruction of the environment uh, wastage all of these things are a part of corruption. These activities will normally constitute criminal offenses in most jurisdictions, although the precision and the precise de- definition of the immense of the offense may differ based upon what type of corruption uh, is taking place. So therefore, uh, what we are seeing is, is that there are uh, many different types of corruption uh, which uh, are quite prevalent within uh, society. Uh, the wider definition is preferable as these uh, corrupt practices and acts are all criminal offenses. normally involved deception one way or the other have illegal profit uh, as their objective result in financial loss or defective quality and require similar prevention oblique detection detection uh, measures so all of this uh, then uh, becomes a, a part of this very uh, composite uh, broader term in general terms bribery is committed where a person offers or gives some benefit to another person as an inducement for that person to act uh, dishonestly or improperly It can also occur where a person requests or solicits a benefit from a person as an inducement for him himself to act dishonestly or uh, improperly. So uh, again, we see that this is transactional. Uh, one is the giver and uh, the person is giving some money or maybe some gift. And in response, the taker has to do uh, a particular action which would not be within the ambit of the law. In such cases, all persons as well as other persons who are who are complicit in the offense may be guilty of bribery. So it's not only the taker of the bribe, but also the giver of the bribe. And way back 1400 years plus ago, uh, Islam talk about the fact that the giver and the taker, uh, both are going to be responsible in the context of bribe. And then OECD in 1997 uh, adopted this, uh, that uh, actually the giver is uh, more of a criminal than the taker because he's the one who is inducing uh, that particular bribe. And therefore, uh, OECD in 1997, Uh, basically uh, prevailed the fact uh, that the giver must also be punished and taken care of. A bribe may be a cash payment or it may be a non-cash benefit. The dishonest or improper action can be an act or omission by a person in relation to that person's duty or employee's business. For example, a policeman taking bribe from a person for not filing a complaint uh, against him or her or even of breaking a simple thing as a traffic uh, signal or over speeding, all of these things can entail the, the, the dimension of bribery. Uh, another could be a judge uh, taking a bribe from a person to decide the case in his or her favor. Uh, it could be uh, for uh, getting a job. Uh, it could be for getting a contract. So all of these are different types of uh, briberies uh, which basically tend to take place uh, within society. Uh, there can be an institutional bri- uh, bribery. For example, uh, in certain procurements, we, we hear about the fact that the whole institution uh, will be charging 15%. Uh, of the amount uh, that uh, the contractor gets and then that is distributed accor- accordingly uh, to certain defined percentages right across the organization so that will be more institutional it could be personal bribery and that would be one representative within an organization is getting the money and he or she is uh, going beyond the line of duty and doing uh, something corrupt and illegal that would be uh, personal bribery fly side bribery refers to those persons organizations who are responsible for offering or paying bribes. So uh, when we're talking about supply side basically means when uh, someone is not demanding for it, but the other party themselves voluntarily uh, are giving a bribe for a particular advantage. The demand side bribery refers to those persons or organizations who are responsible for demanding or receiving bribes. So this is the, the demand side basically uh, is the receiving end of uh, bribes. Well, we see that in corruption, there are gifts, hospitality, donations and other benefits. Uh, which basically induce someone to act in, uh, dishonestly or improperly. If it could also be used as a facilitation payment, uh, is the terms often used in relation to payments made to officials who has to obtain or expedite services to which payer is entitled. So I know that I am entitled to a particular, to a particular 
issue but because it is not taking place therefore i uh, would be initiating the bribe and that uh, the onus basically then falls on the uh, taker of the bribe because he or she is uh, manipulating or exploiting the whole system to his or her own uh, benefit and that is extremely important the amounts which are paid are often quite small yet the consequences of not paying can be serious so many times what we see uh, is that uh, the the amounts are not that huge but implications are because whoever is sitting in the seat of power uh, would tend to jeopardize uh, whatever the person uh, who is not giving a particular bribe so what we see ladies and gentlemen is that bribes are of different types uh, they tend to prevail in society in different forms uh, some can be voluntary in which both parties are voluntary uh, some cases are uh, where uh, they they could have a difference of opinion and sometimes uh, in uh, bribery issues we see that there could be complete institutions which are involved in it and Uh, they are so ingrained into the organization that no one can even get out of it so uh, these are the different implications of corruption and definitely wherever there is corruption there cannot be good governance thank you so much